Hi, in this clip we're going to look at the hacker, and there are actually two kinds of hackers. There's the honest hacker and there's sort of the delusional hacker. Uh, basically, a hacker is somebody who, you know, starts off, oh my goodness, who starts off, uh, you know, and gets going and gets to a plateau maybe, maybe a second one. For example, <clears throat> we learn how to ride a bike. And we ride a bike just fine. And we just continue to ride a bike at that sort of speed, pace, capability, whatever, for the rest of our lives. Um, some sub points on this. The, uh, you know, the, the hacker gets to sort of, I think, what's a passable or okay performance level and really is at some level uh, content. Uh, now, there, this is the difference between honest and dishonest hackers. The, the, the delusional hacker will talk about getting better and wishing for and deserving a promotion, you know, moving to the next level, but because they're not, they've, they're not practicing, you know, the, the, all the concepts of mastery, they aren't moving ahead. So what's their excuse? They then have to start to be able to play the victim and say, you know, gee, I, I didn't get, you know, this, whatever, or, you know, I've been, I've been on a diet for, you know, all this time and I'm not succeeding, but it, I've got reasons for that. I'm, I've got exceptional different problems, but you know, so forth. So we, you know, we, we see people that struggle with uh, certain levels of, of performance or condition and keep talking about changing it, but for some reason it just doesn't change. And then we start to hear the excuses for why it doesn't change and it's, 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 they're all outside the person as opposed to being honest inside. Uh, one of the ways that people can keep, uh, stay in denial, and marketers are very good at this, is they can say, uh, they can continue to deny that they have a problem. They can make little cosmetic changes, uh, so forth. They can they can uh, get uh, caught up with sort of external trappings or gimmicks or tricks to sort of give them the illusion that they're making progress or keeping up with change when in fact they're not on a substantive basis. Um, these people, you know, are fine for a while perhaps, but when other people around them grow past them and they get promoted or they move on to uh, higher levels of education or higher levels of, of, of professional accomplishment um, uh, the, you, or just social maturity, you, you kind of grow out of the relationship. You know, if you start taking up a new sport and you have a group of people that you're playing tennis with, but because you take lessons and you hit with the ball machine and you are mindful about how you're practicing and, and you actually get better, then those people you were playing with initially become not appropriate. And you start playing with a different group of people. Well, the people you used to play with, they get very upset. You know, how dare you leave? What, what do you think? You're better than us? And now you're seeing the tension between somebody who's on the mastery path growing past people who are sort of hackers in denial. As opposed to, you might find somebody saying, you know what? You're really working hard and you're getting better and golly, you know, I can't give you any more game and that's terrific because, you know, I'm just who I am and I'm just happy doing what I'm doing and I have no illusions that that's what I'm doing. So, um, and one last key point point here is, is that when an industry changes, and all industries are changing very rapidly now because the whole metabolic pace of innovation and technology is changing thanks to the internet and all things digital, and therefore all information, and the ability to radically outsource all kinds of business activities allows business strategy modeling really to be a, a, a key thing. Then the people who can't change or keep with the change become obsolete, and they they wind up getting let go. Or if they don't get let go, they work for a company that goes down the tubes because the company, you know, can't t deal with individuals at the individual level, let alone the process level or the branch profit center level. And finally, I'd say that in many hobbies, things we do, it's okay to be an honest hacker. For example, I don't ride a bike any differently than I did. When I'm 20, I mean, probably drive, drive, ride my bike a little bit more conservatively when I was 20, but I don't have any new tricks. I just have the, <laughs> I actually have the same bike that I've had since 1976. Um, and that's okay. But the key thing is, is that we don't want to be doing a level of performance that limits other people. So within a distribution environment, for any one person to say, this is who I am, this is the level I do, and I'm not gonna change. This is sufficient for me, and that's fine. I mean, for an outside salesperson to say, I'm harvesting my territory because I just don't have the energy, or I'm sitting on a lot of potential different accounts because, you know, I don't I don't have the particular skill set I need to sort of click with this account. That that that's not responsible to the customer. 
it's not responsible to all the stakeholders on a direct or indirect basis if you think about it. So really in a in a in a business where we have a, a vision of improving value and innovating to do that to feed all stakeholders ambitions, then everybody's gotta get with the program and say, okay, fine, you know. I, 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 will, I will get on a path of mastery and I will continue to improve and have a living edge to what I'm doing. So that's the story of the hacker. Thank you.